The Guru Paramurta was very famous, or one might even say infamous, with his 12 disciples for their misadventures, and this is one of them. <laughs> so the sage and his disciples made their living traveling about the, company, uh, the country and begging, performing small religious services, relating stories, songs, poetry, whatever, suited the audience, uh, generally of a religious bent, because of course the, the disciples were there for mostly religious instruction, but also some, some life instruction. Um, so they would travel about in the minimal of clothing necessary to keep my, mind and body and soul together. And as they were traveling one time, they came across a large river. And looking out over the river, one of the disciples said to, to the master, to the guru, I know this river. My cousin was a salt merchant. And he took a load right across this river. By the time he'd got his mules to the other side, the river had stolen every scrap of salt from the bags. It's a thief. It's vicious. Got to watch out for this. Well, the guru thought about this. He said, we'll, we'll ponder this while we, we fix what little food we have for, for a midday meal. So they got a fire together and cooked a little rice and whatever else they had at hand. And while they were relaxing after the meal, one of the disciples took one of the sticks that had been cast away from the fire. And he went down to the side of the river and decided to test it. So he decided he'd poke the river with the stick and see if there was any kind of response. Now, of course, <laughs> the end of the stick had been in the fire. And so when he stuffed it in the water, there was a... <laughs> and he dropped the stick and he screamed. And he ran back to his brothers and his guru. And he said, Master, Master, the river is angry at us. It hissed. We're not going to be able to cross... And the guru said, I know what we can do. We will wait till morning after the, the river has been asleep. And when we get up early in the morning when it's just barely light, the river will be sleeping and calm and we will go across and there will be no problem. So they stayed the night, shivering in their, in their loose clothing, in their loincloths, but they made it. And the next morning, in the chill, the light had just come up, the same young man found the stick, the same stick he'd had the day before, and he poked into the river, and there was no sound. Ah. And he waved his fellow disciples and the master over, and they all wrapped up their clothing and their possessions on top of their head, and they quietly, quietly crossed over the river. Now, the master and his 12 disciples had come to the river. The master and his 12 disciples had started across the river. And then the master looked and he counted his disciples as they came out of the water. Oh no, 12, but there were 13 of us. <laughs> and, the, and the disciples went, Oh yes, oh yes, and they counted just to be certain there was no error. Yes, there were 13 of us. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. There are only 12, 12. Oh, the river has stolen one of our brothers. Oh, the tragedy. What a vile river, what a cruel river. They started throwing rocks and dirt and rotten plants and such into the river and screaming and yelling, give us back our brother. Well, coming up the way behind them was a merchant. And he saw them. Now, he was currently without any wares. He had sold off somewhere else and was making his way home. And he, he saw all the hullabaloo and he said, what has happened? And they described the situation to him. And he said, I am a wise man myself. I have lots of experience with this kind of thing. I know how we can get your lost brother back. 
Oh, how, oh, how? He said that there will be a price. Everything you have, everything you have, I will take in return for your brother. And they, they agreed to this. He said, then do what I say. Go def further down the road, and each of you find a fairly fresh cow pie and bring it back here to the river's edge. And they did this. He said, now place it on the ground in front of you and kneel. And this they did. He said, now put your nose into the cow pie and then stand. And this they did. He said, now count the nose prints. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Hooray! Our brother is returned. 